I found the temple of the Zakarum. In the deepest recesses of the temple, I found a dark gathering. My companion, the Wanderer, Talrasha, and a great evil who could only be the Lord of Hatred himself, Mephisto. Greetings, mortal. I, the Draugr, welcome you to my domain, a place where the dead and the living collide. I am an ancient and powerful undead storyteller, and today I shall be recounting a tale that will chill your bones and rattle your soul. Listen closely, mortal, for I shall speak of Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred, one of the three prime evils that have plagued Sanctuary since the Great Sin Wars. Long before the rise of mortals, there existed a great cosmic dragon known as Tathamet, the embodiment of evil itself. His equal and polar opposite was Anu, the being of ultimate good. These two titans fought for aeons beyond human comprehension, their cosmic bodies clashing in a battle beyond reckoning. Their final clash was cataclysmic, and they both perished in the ensuing carnage, equally matched and equally connecting a final blow to one another. This result of such cosmic blows created the universe. However, from their broken bodies emerged new life, Five angels arose from Anu, while seven evils were born from Tathamet. Eldest of the prime evils was Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred. His power was great, and his malice was unquenchable. He sought only to spread hatred and discord, sowing the seeds of disharmony wherever he went. Now, rest your weary bones and prepare for the tale of Mephisto. The dead shall speak, and you shall listen. The story of Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred, is not one to be taken lightly. Born from the seven heads of Tathamet, his realm within the burning hells was a place of eternal damnation, known as the Realm of Hatred. Mephisto harbors an intense hatred for the High Heavens and the angels that dwell within. Unlike his brothers, he prefers to work in the shadows, sowing discord and manipulating those around him to achieve his nefarious goals. Although Tathamet and anew have long since perished. The war between good and evil rages on, with Mephisto at the forefront of the battle as a tactician. It is said that he is the most intelligent and cunning of the prime evils, a true leader among the denizens of the burning hells. While many demon lords rely on brute strength, and force to enact their will, Mephisto employs a more subtle approach. He manipulates those around him, turning them against each other. Mephisto's true power lies in his ability to corrupt even the most virtuous of souls. He twists their minds and turns them against their fellow beings, making them do his bidding without even realizing it. His brothers, Diablo, the Lord of Terror, and Bale, the Lord of Destruction, often scoffed at his manipulations, but they too fell under his sway more often than not. He pit his brothers against each other if it suited his goals. Deckard Cain's speculation of Mephisto's unifying and tactical nature is not without merit, for the Lord of Hatred is not simply a mindless brute, but a master of manipulation and strategy. Through his cunning and deceit, Mephisto has been able to provide 
opportunities for his brothers to pursue their own ambitions while still maintaining his hold over them. He understands the importance of allowing his brethren to exercise their own will as it only strengthens the prime evil's hold over the realms. Indeed, Mephisto's hatred is a tool, one that he wields with precision and purpose. He views it as a means to an end, a way to achieve his ultimate goals. His very presence exudes an aura of malevolence that can corrupt even the purest of hearts. The corruption spreads like a miasma, infecting all in its path and turning them into rage-induced pawns. Indeed, Mephisto's physical stature is a testament to his incredible power, towering at 20 feet, 6.1 meters tall. He is a fearsome sight to behold, and his foul blood, which courses through his veins like a river of corruption, is a testament to his evil nature. Legend has it that an angel once managed to draw blood from Mephisto in battle. The blood spilled to the ground and from it arose the magma demons, monstrous creatures born of the Lord of Hatred's very essence. These fiery beasts are fiercely loyal to their master and will stop at nothing to defend him from his enemies. When the magma demons rose up to defend Mephisto, they drove the angels back with their sheer ferocity and power. Such is the might of the Lord of Hatred that even his very blood can create beings of such terrible strength and loyalty. As the war between the forces of heaven and hell raged on, Mephisto grew ever more cunning and patient. He watched and waited as the angels began to withdraw from the battlefield of pandemonium, biding his time until the perfect moment to strike. But his brother, Baal, the impetuous lord of destruction, could not wait any longer. He stormed the pandemonium fortress, seeking to discover the source of power that the angels and demons both sought. The world stone, also known as the Eye Ever Knew. This colossal, mountain-sized object held with it immense power and was coveted by both sides in the eternal conflict, and Baal, in his arrogance and impatience, sought to claim it for himself, yet it was gone, stolen perhaps. The stone was later wielded by Lilith, daughter of Mephisto, daughter of hatred, and by the angel of wisdom, Anarius. In their creation of the world of sanctuary, a realm conceived as a respite from the unending conflict between the celestial and infernal forces. By manipulating the frequency and dimensional alignment, of this realm, they concealed it from the gaze of angels and demons, still locked in the throes of that eternal strife. Thus did they carve out a pocket dimension, a refuge removed from the interminable clash of cosmic forces, Lilith eventually giving Anarius children known as Nephilim, giving their new world life. Listen closely, mortal, for I have a piece of wisdom to share with you. The Eye of Anu can create new realities. Think of the Eye within your mind, the one you use when you close your eyes and imagine. With this power, you too can create worlds or destroy them. However, be cautious, for if you let darkness cloud your mind's eye, you may stumble and fall. All. Many Nephilim have met such a fate before you, so use this power wisely and you too may create countless worlds. The tale of the World Stone is a lengthy one that deserves its own telling, but let us return to Mephisto and his machinations. The Lord of Hatred caught wind of a new realm, Sanctuary, and its inhabitants, a people who had summoned demons through the power of the 
the mages. The demons, in turn, reported back to the prime evils in hell, telling all what they had witnessed. Sensing a potential ally in these beings, Mephisto and his brothers took notice of the dormant powers of the Nephilim that lay within humanity. These powers could be instrumental in their fight against the forces of heaven. Yet, Inarius had already devised a plan to weaken the Nephilim by manipulating the World Stone. He had turned it in such a way as to make the Nephilim more human, stripping away their powers and rendering them vulnerable. Which Inarius and Lilith's story is also for another time, just providing you with some context. Understand, dear mortal, you're more powerful than you realize. Forces have sought to hide humanity's past, keeping the mind's eye blind. Go within to unlock your hidden potential, mortal. The prime evils, ever cunning, once devised a plan to manipulate the people of Sanctuary by creating the Triune, a seemingly benevolent deity with each prime evil assuming the role of a compassionate god. Mephisto himself took on the guise of Mephis, spirit of love. <laughs> In response, Inarius created the Cathedral of Light to counter their influence and thus began the Sin War. At the conclusion of this bloody conflict, Mephisto met with the Angiris Council and made an offer. He proposed that Sanctuary be left untouched by the angels and demons, allowing the children of the realm to chart their own course for good or evil. In exchange, Mephisto agreed to place his mark upon the ruins of the Cathedral of Light, sealing the flux between worlds, and as a further condition, Anarius himself was delivered into Mephisto's custody. Verily, in those ancient times, Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred, did deign to accord Ariel, the Angel of Hope, a measure of reverence. She was the sole embodiment of virtue with a true purpose and as the sinful war drew to a close he did even deign to wink at her but alas in the days that followed the lesser evils grew weary of their brethren's fixation on humankind to the neglect of their ultimate goal of toppling the very gates of heaven thus did they cast out the prime evils from the infernal realm, condemning them to wander the mortal plane of sanctuary? Much befell the world, Tyriel, the angel of justice, did take pity upon humanity and did create the Herodrim, entrusting them with the mighty task of binding the three prime evils within soul stones for all eternity. Verily, in the ancient days of the Herodrim, it was Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred, who was the first to be captured. Yet, many valiant warriors perished in their attempt to breach the Fortress of Bone that he had built, and his ceaseless army of undead was a fearsome foe indeed. Nevertheless, the Herodrim succeeded in vanquishing Mephisto, and his essence was sealed within the Soul Stone. The Zacharoon priests were entrusted with his precious artifact and they kept it securely sealed within the guardian tower of the temple of light but as the ages passed mephisto's corrupting influence continued to fester within the soul stone until at last it began to corrupt even the high council of zacharoon themselves the once virtuous council was reduced to a mockery of its former glory and they fashioned the compelling orb to control the rest of the Zacharum's fateful, concealing their master's lair from the sight of prying eyes. In time, Diablo arrived in the guise of
of the Dark Wanderer. With Bale at his side, the two made their way into the temple's innermost sanctum, where Mephisto's soul stone was kept. With a terrible power, they shattered the stone and freed the Lord of Hatred from his prison. Thus, after nearly three centuries, the prime evils were united once more. Within the chamber, they hatched a wicked plan to reclaim the burning hells and take vengeance upon those who had overthrown them. Diablo, assuming his true form, crossed through the infernal gates and journeyed into hell to rally those who remained loyal to the three. Bale set out to corrupt the world stone in the north, while Mephisto remained behind to destroy all who would dare to oppose their nefarious plans. However, mortal heroes, after a long and intense battle, imprisoned Mephisto's essence within the soul stone once again. The artifact was later destroyed at the Hellforge, casting Mephisto's spirit into the unseen netherworld. The witch Adria, a devout follower of Diablo, bound Mephisto's essence to Zoltan Kool's Black Soul Stone. Be sure to check out that video of Zoltan Kool. This was a part of a grand design to merge all the evils into one, like the great dragon Tathamet. A great many things have transpired which will bleed into Diablo's lore, so I shall save that for another time mortal. Mephisto was the fourth and final great evil to be marked by her and her preparation for Diablo's inevitable return. But when Adria found Mephisto's soul, the Lord of Hatred fought back with a fury that she had not foreseen. Time and time again, he seized control of the witch's mind, and only the safeguards she had put in place saved her from being consumed by his power. Nonetheless, she managed to mark his essence. At one point, Mephisto was briefly merged with Diablo to form a single prime evil, but they were defeated by a new hero, a Nephilim. The great evils were then drawn back into the Soul Stone, their souls writhing in agony, crying out for release. However, due to the actions of Mathael, the stone was destroyed and Diablo was set free, still containing the essence of Mephisto and the other evils. But in time, Mephisto's spirit managed to break free from Diablo's grasp, just as the other evils did. I must say, it pleases me to know that my words have captured your attention for this long. As an ancient, undead Trogger, I have seen many things come and go throughout the centuries, but your presence has given warmth to this non-beating heart. <laughs> ah, Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred, such a fascinating creature, and one that has caused much chaos and destruction throughout the land. As for his presence in Diablo 4, I cannot say for certain, but I sense that his influence may be felt in some way or another. We shall soon see. As for you, Nephilim, what path will you choose? Will you align with the forces of good? Or will you succumb to the temptations of evil? That is a question that only time will answer. But I urge you to choose wisely, for the fate of the world hangs in the balance. Perhaps, Nephilim, you should carve out your own path. Now, my dear viewers, I must bid you farewell. Know that my undead heart beats eternally for you. Well, if it could, and I eagerly anticipate our next encounter. Until then, stay safe and tread carefully in these dark times. I heard a voice that like a thousand needles in my heart. My brothers, at long last we stand reunited. The infernal gate has been prepared, and the, the time, time of our final victory is at hand. Back of the way to hell, the evil pandemic. And the evil that was once vanquished shall rise anew.